If you want to become a freelancer or start your own web design agency, then this is the right video for you. In this video, I'll be taking you through a step-by-step -step process of how you can go from knowing nothing about freelance web design to actually being able to run your own successful business. So a little about me, my name is Dylan Davino. I'm 20 years old and I've been running a freelance web design business for about two years now. I actually dropped out of college. I dropped out of UConn where I was studying engineering in order to start this business because I knew that I was not going to do that for the rest of my life. I decided on freelance web design for a few reasons because number one, you can do it from anywhere in the world and you can choose your own schedule and you can make as much money as you want. So I really feel strongly that freelance web design is a great career and if you're interested in a career where you have complete time freedom, location freedom, and freedom to make as much money as you want, then freelance web design might be the career for you. All right, so getting into the meat of the video, the first thing you have to do when you're starting to freelance or start your own agency is learn web design and learn sales. Now I know this sounds pretty obvious and I've said it before, but you can't really go into something that you don't know anything about. And so when it comes to learning web design and sales, I'll kind of break it down into a couple categories. So firstly, when it comes to learning web design, you have to choose a platform. Now there are a lot of platforms out there and a lot of people with opposing opinions on which platform you should be using. You have options like Wix and Squarespace that are a lot more simple to use and they do have a lot of benefits. They're easy to use, the clients probably like using them as well, but you don't have as much design capability as a platform like Webflow. So at Davino Digital, we personally use Webflow and we also use Shopify when it comes to e-commerce projects. Now, Shopify is the no-brainer option for building an e-commerce website. It's just the largest and best platform out there for e-commerce. So if you're gonna be doing that, then I recommend using Shopify. Now, for any general project where you just want to build a website and be able to do a lot of custom work, Webflow is probably the best solution because Webflow is a really great platform that has an Adobe-like feel to it and it lets you do just about anything, customize any aspect of any section, whereas uh, um, you know a different tool like Wix or Squarespace might not give you that capability. So if you're looking to take web design really seriously, I would consider looking into Webflow, although it's going to take you a while to learn. And if you want to get started with something simple, try out Squarespace or Wix. Now when it comes to learning these platforms, you can definitely check out a bunch of different videos on YouTube, a bunch of different articles, and there's a lot of resources out there. I learned it all just by watching YouTube videos and taking courses. Um, by the way, courses are another great thing that you should be checking out. There's a lot of design courses, development courses. There's really a lot to learn when it comes to building websites if you're going to be doing it properly, um, as opposed to if you were just going to throw up a Wix website. That's one thing, you know, you could charge a certain amount of money for that, but definitely not as much as somebody who is a professional who knows every single step of the process. And you know, there's a lot more that goes into it than just putting together a quick template. And now jumping into sales, which is obviously another crucial aspect uh, that you need to learn because if you just learn how to build websites, then you're never going to make any money. You need to be able to outreach, find clients and close those clients in order to use your web design skills. So you might wanna consider learning sales first and see if you could even sell a website uh, before you start learning Webflow for six months and realize that you can't make any sales um, because it takes time to figure out sales, it really does. So if you're interested in learning more about outreach and sales, I actually have a video, 15 proven strategies to find web design clients. I definitely recommend you check that out if you want to gain more clients for your agency. Step number two is building your brand and doing outreach. So like I said, you've just learned web design, you've learned sales, you really have to start putting your skills to use in order to build your audience, build your brand, have people find you, have people trust you. It's not enough to just learn how to do web design. Like I said, being a freelancer is so much more than that and so much of your time is going to be spent trying to find clients versus actually fulfilling those projects. So pick an outreach strategy, do it as much as possible, build those portfolio websites up and keep adding up, adding up more portfolio pieces eventually those clients will start referring you to other clients and it's gonna create a snowball where your business starts to grow exponentially. Now, one of my favorite strategies for outreach, you could say, is networking. 
because networking not only is going to help you find a lot more clients, but it's also going to help you meet a lot of people and learn a lot from them. So you're going to be able to talk to people that are really experienced in owning their own business. They're going to teach you a lot about things you need to know and mistakes that they made in order to avoid those mistakes and save a lot of time. Oh, and go check out this video, five mistakes that you should avoid being a freelance web designer. But anyways, you definitely want to avoid those mistakes because those are going to save you a lot of time if you actually do it the proper way instead of going and doing it the way I did and then it taking two years to build a successful agency versus taking six months. So step number three is building up your portfolio in your niche. All right, so you've started to build some websites. You're starting to feel somewhat confident in selling your web design services. You kind of have your prices a little bit figured out and you're getting into a groove. Now, there's a huge difference between somebody who's just building websites for anybody and somebody who's built up a brand, an audience, and a niche. So when it comes to a niche, there are a lot of different types of niches, and one of them is the platforms that you use. So you could advertise yourself as a Webflow designer, and certainly people are looking to pay more for Webflow users than Wix users or Squarespace users. And another type of niche is the industry that you work with. So for example, maybe you work with florists or maybe you work with photographers. There's a lot of different industries, obviously, and each of them has completely different, you know, ways of looking at the value of a website and they have completely different requirements for what's on their website. Now, building up a niche is going to be helpful for a few reasons. It's going to help that audience find you easier because you specialize in that one specific thing. And it's also going to be great because you actually know the processes of building that specific website because you've done it so many times before. So figuring out your niche and your portfolio and brand around that niche is going to be one really big aspect in growing a successful web design agency. So without a doubt, you should outline your target audience. Who are you trying to reach? Why are you trying to reach them? How can you benefit them? And you want to be able to show them the work that you've done with that specific industry or on that platform. This is really going to help you stand apart from your competitors, which in web design is really important because there are a lot of web designers and you have to figure out a way to stand out. So step number four is to scale your business. Now, I might be jumping a few steps ahead of where you're really at, but at least you should know what's going to come next. So once you've started to get the ball rolling, you are pretty comfortable with landing new projects. You're starting to grow your agency and build up your portfolio, figure out your niche, figure out how to make sales and close deals. At that point, you're going to start to scale your agency. So you scale in a few different ways. Way number one is by hiring new team members. Now, I'm not going to go super in depth in this video about hiring and managing new team members, but I'm sure there are a lot of other resources out there and I'll probably make a video about it at some point. But the fact of the matter is you cannot do all of the work yourself. If you're trying to manage five or 10 projects a month on your own, and then you also want to land next month's five or 10 projects, then it's going to be really difficult for you to do all of the work yourself. So hiring and managing team members is one really crucial aspect when it comes to scaling your business. When it comes to scaling, it's really important that you have all of the tasks and subtasks of building a website laid out so that both you and your team members can be really familiar with what they're doing and they know what they're responsible for. And that way you could just say, all right, this is um, what the due date is and this is exactly what it's going to be. And that way you have a really efficient system that's going to be responsible for keeping you up to date and making sure quality stays intact. And another aspect of managing your systems and processes is managing your sales and finances. So when it comes to managing your sales, this is kind of considered a CRM. You really want to track all of the leads and the new opportunities coming in for new projects. So you want to take notes on all of the different things that are going on in your agency in terms of, oh, so I just got a phone call or I got a form submission. Somebody's interested in hiring me for my services. Well, what did they ask you on that call? What did they say? And you should have been taking notes and recorded it all in your CRM. You should also document when you're going to follow up with that lead. This is one of the biggest things that helped me when it comes to scaling was keeping all of this stuff in order because I kind of had a lot of leads and I didn't really know how to keep track of it besides for like writing it down in a Google Docs and I was a little bit all over the place. I didn't know when somebody called me what the project was exactly about or what the lead was all about. I didn't know when I should be following up and getting all of this in place definitely helped me out big time. 
All right, and step five is to continuously improve and innovate. So you should always be innovating and improving in any career, but when it comes to web design, you really need to be on top of it because this is a tech career and you know how fast tech changes. So especially when it comes to this current date, you know, 2023, we have ChatGPT, we have Midjourney. There are AI tools that are completely changing the game right now. And you could either be somebody that uses those tools to get ahead, or you could be somebody who gets completely crushed by other people using these tools. And I hate to be so brutal about it and so up, upfront about it, but really these tools are extremely powerful. And if you're not using them, you might go out of business because other people are gonna be able to do five times the amount of work and possibly higher quality work all while putting in less effort. So you really need to stay on top of your AI game, um, stay on top of the platforms people are using and the new updates. Um, there's a lot of things to keep up to date with. And then on top of that, you always wanna be improving your systems and processes. So I just talked a lot about systems and processes, but you can always have room to improve those. And you really wanna keep in mind that you're going for two things. You're going for quantity and quality. So you wanna be able to improve your system's efficiency and also improve the quality of work that's being pumped out of the system. So I know I'm throwing a bunch of stuff at you and it's probably a little hard to understand at this moment in time. You probably wanna focus on the first three steps before thinking about all this, but just keep in mind that you always wanna be staying on top of your game and never getting left behind because things change really fast. All right, so by following these steps, you're gonna be well on your way to becoming a successful freelance web designer. I know that if you follow these steps, you are going to be able to grow an agency, learn all the skills of web design and sales, and then scale an agency where you can hire more team members and ultimately live a life where you can make as much money as you want working whenever you want and wherever you want. All right, so with all that being said, thank you for watching the video. And if you did like it, again, subscribe to the channel for more content just like this about growing your agency, becoming successful in freelance web design, and not to mention following my trip this summer. Um, I definitely think it's gonna be entertaining. I'm gonna be you know, doing a bunch of different content about that. So if you're interested in subscribing, go ahead and do that. And if you're not, then just give me a thumbs up because this video took a lot of time to make.